Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas! It's December, and that means Christmas is coming. Along with the 24 hours of annoying Christmas songs all over the radio. With the plus of Christmas movies and hot cocoa. Goodbye, Casper, and hello, Santa Claus. Just wait one second. Just because it's Christmas doesn't mean a Christmas movie couldn't be a creepy one. Well, according to Twitter user Hannah Priest, the Santa Claus movies is one of the horrific Christmas films of all times. Welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, what's up? I'm James, and welcome. If you're not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button down below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button also. My Twitter is in the corner of the screen. If you want to talk about theories, or have some of your own you want to share. Yes, Hannah Priest believes that the Santa Claus movies are darker than they seem. Let me give you some backstory if you haven't seen the movies yet. Spoilers ahead. Back in 1994, Scott Calvin takes on the mantle of Santa Claus after the big man stumbles off the roof and dies. Side note, falling off from a two-story building won't kill you. So Santa falls off the house and dies. Scott puts on the suit and boom, he becomes Santa Claus. What well, kinda, he first delivers the gifts in a single night which nobody knows how that's even possible. And lands himself and his son in the North Pole, where they meet the elves and Bernard. Which none of them seem to really care that the other Santa died and there is a new one. He just disappears and doesn't even phase anyone. And then there's Curtis, who shows up in Santa Claus 2 and continues to Santa Claus 3. But Bernard is in Santa Claus 1 and is last seen in Santa Claus 2. Where did he go? Is Curtis elf number 1 now? Yes, Curtis is elf number 1. In the first Santa Claus, we are introduced to Judy, the elf, who makes the best cocoa recipe in the world. She spent 1200 years perfecting it. She is then replaced with another cocoa maker and that's it, she's gone. So even the elves disappear, and no one is worried about it either. But let's get back to Santa Claus 2, the one where Curtis and Bernard discover the clause about the Mrs. Claus. But Santa must be married, but no one seems to know about this, not even the legendary figures. Curtis, elf number one, apparently has not come across this in 900 years of working with Santas. So there's an eight year difference between the Santa Claus 1 and Santa Claus 2, and Scott being the only one that have come across the Mrs. Claus's clause. That means between 900 years, there have been about 100 to 110 Santa Clauses, with Scott Calvin being the longest Santa Claus there has been so far. But wait, what about the snow globes in the third movie? There are about 50 globes in there, maybe even more. Hannah Priest suggests that there have been about 50 Santas over the 900 years, with a lifespan of 33 years. So either no Santa has lasted more than 8 years, or there have been 50 Santas, and everyone is lying about the Mrs. Claus. But why? Why is it so dark? Why are they lying? Anna Priest suggests we look in the kitchen. Why would the elves need such a big oven, a massive oven? They are toy makers, but not a bakery. Yes, they need to eat, but I don't think they need such a big oven like that. Plus, when the elves are in the cocoa, they get a grin when someone comments on it, like there's a sick ingredient that they only know. Could the North Pole be filled with little cannibals? Look at the delivery room. Buddy Claus surely wasn't the first baby born in the North Pole. Where are the other kids? From the other Santas? And the other wives? How is that for a Christmas movie? I hope you enjoyed this video, but remember my Twitter is up here in the corner if you want to contact me or down below in the description. Until next video, peace guys.